Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and I'm back with another haul video. I have an auction haul to show you today. It's actually going to be in two parts because I just have so much. I went to the auction yesterday. It was quite an ordeal. Uh, it was the first auction that we've had around here of at least good quality in a month maybe. So there was a lot of people that turned up for it and it was a pretty nice day considering weather-wise. So there was quite a lot of people there and prices at the beginning and throughout tended to be on the higher side of what I'm used to. But we did have a dry spell of auctions. People were rearing to go, wanting to flex their egos, I guess. And a lot of resellers probably out there wanting to get new inventory. I was just lucky to get what I got. So I was able to get quite a lot of stuff I'll show you here on this table. And then in another video preceding this one will be auction hall number two of the same day. So I will just start with, what do I want to start with? Let's start right over here. I actually grabbed these really interesting bookends and they are ceramic. They're brown, not really marked on the bottoms or anything, but they are of knights or like a Trojan head. They are really cool though. And I actually paid $6 for the pair of them. I almost got it cheaper, but there was another person that happened to want them too. And uh, so yeah, it's not a bad price for a bookend pair, considering the size. These are a good, these, these are a good size. So they will go on Etsy and I don't know how much I'll put on them, but probably about 50 to $60, uh, maybe even higher with shipping included. So those are really fun and I'm happy to get those. They're just a different type of item, uh, really unique. Speaking of that sort of old world mentality, we have this ship and I paid a dollar for it. I was surprised to get it for that. Nobody wanted it. This is the type of thing that'll go in my booth. It's uh, a nautical type thing and my booth is in Carlisle, Illinois and that is Illinois' largest man-made lake. That's where that is in that town. So shipping stuff and boating, nautical, all of that kind of does pretty well. So I will try this out in the booth for maybe about nine or ten dollars and I think that'll go really good over there. This item here is actually Mel Mac. It was free. Barb went with me. That is Erin's sister. She went with me and she was able to get a few things too. But this is a Mel Mac, uh, um, you put butter, a butter dish and it's green. She didn't want it. She, she got what she wanted out of the, the, um, the flat, the, uh, the stuff. You know, you bid on it and you have like a little bit of a, a flat, I don't know, the grouping, whatever. The grouping of stuff, she didn't want this and she was actually surprised I grabbed it. But it's Melmac and I like the color. It's sort of this emerald green. I thought, of course there's people out there that have this color um, and they want the matching butter dish. But this is called Color Fleet by Brandshell, St. Louis, Missouri. So here's the logo on the bottom that you might be able to see there. So... Yeah, it's pretty cool. Something like this, probably about $15 online. It's just a great little serving piece if you have that pattern. I want to take care of this here because it's kind of in my way. This is a really cool uh, Art Deco picture frame. And it's on this stand that, that kind of moves. So that's really fun. You can see there it's silver in color. It's wood. Here's the back. It's a little bit... Well, it's not the most stable thing. It does have some shape to it because of its age, but it's really awesome. I don't really do a great deal of showing pictures around the house. I don't have a lot of things to frame like that. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep it. Well, I'm in the resale business. So I've gotta sell it anyway, but it's awesome. And I don't really find a lot of cool Art Deco stuff. So that's sort of why uh, I'm kind of attached to it, but it's pretty cool. So I got this one here, this frame here, in addition to this one here, which is really cool. See the Art Deco motifs on here? And this is a stand-up type frame. This, uh, I cannot see what I'm doing. This here is a little bent up, if you can see that. Right there, it's sort of bent. So it can't really support itself without some doctoring. But the front of this frame is what's so awesome. It's this cream and black Art Deco printing on there. So cool. Actually, the back says genuine chromium, chromium plate. Chromium. It's really, it's, I can't hardly see that. Genuine chromium or chromium plate. So that's cool. 
I'm not sure what chromium is or chromium is, but uh, very neat. So I did actually buy some of these bowls. I was sort of getting upset because I couldn't buy anything. Now they did the glassware table first. Well, one of the glassware tables and they had on it a lot of, uh, well, they had some 1800s dishes from Japan, stuff that I'm not that interested in, frankly, but these, these finally popped up and they were a dollar for the set of four bowls. So I thought for the booth at the very least, they're kind of cute. So. That's a really fun cabbage leaf type bowl with a transferware flower in the center. Very nice. Here's another one. This one sort of has like a petal design along the rim with another transferware design in the center of that one. And actually the back says wheel lock trade one mark. So that's different. Just a fun Vic, shabby chic Victorian whatever you want to call it style that is kind of popular so these are great little pickups for the booth I could put five dollars on each one of these and I think they'll do really well and then this one here is sort of just a clear clear bowl not as desirable I don't think but there it is and one of my favorites is this federal bowl with this fun iridescent shine on here. It's called Moon Glow by Federal. And Federal, you'll, do, you'll note that it's Federal by the F in the shield. That's how you know it's Federal. Uh, and you may think at first glance that's Fire King, but it would say Fire King if it was Fire King. This is Federal if it's an F in a shield. Very nice and very cool. So I don't know if this would sell in the booth or not. I might hang on to it, if so, just for a little bit. It's fun. So this 10 right here I got for free because they didn't want it. She wanted something else in the lot. That's what they're called, lots. They wanted something else in the lot and they left three other 10s. This was the one that I thought was the coolest. It's a fruitcake 10 and there's the front of it. I don't think it's terribly old by any means, of course, but it just sort of has that old vibe. We'll try this out in the booth around Christmas time. Yeah, it's a Christmas design. so. Um, yeah, like a three or four dollar tin in the booth, I think will be pretty good for that. Um, right here in the center, I actually got a flat of figurines. I was mentally coming up with this price in my head. How much am I going to pay for this? So I was kind of going through and deciding what I'm going to pay for everything. You know, so my method uh, is if they have a, a lot of figurines or a lot of like smalls in a flat, I'll go through and I'll count how much would I, do I want to pay for each of those and then just combine it which is the most logical thing to do. But so it had a lot of things in it and I'm going to show you the things that obviously caught my eye first, which were these Goebel birds and they are marked Goebel West Germany on the bottom. I don't know if that's readable. There it is. And it's this red bird. I have one of these currently in my shop. At one point I had two of them in my shop. So one of the red birds sold. Uh, the blue ones I had sold immediately. Yeah, the blue ones sold. So I have like some brown ones and I have a yellow one uh, and I can't remember what else. But there's a few other of these types of birds on, in my shop right now. So here's two more of the red ones and they are in great shape. I'm actually just now looking at them uh, uh, in depth. I don't do that at the auctions. I should. I need to look at things like this, you know, really check them over before I bid, but I try not to draw too much attention to things. But that could bite me in the butt, really, it could. So there they are. They're really fun, really fresh, and I think they'll do pretty good online. They go for about 25 bucks a piece. And the way I do it in my shop is I do free shipping, so it's like $30 with free shipping. Next thing that grabbed my attention, of course, is these little angel. This is the smallest one I found just like this. Usually they're about double the size. So this is a lot smaller. It's an angel, September angel, and she has a apple, a book. So she's ready for school. As you can see there, I put a bright light right there and I don't know if it's hindering this or not, but it's supposed to be helping because it's sort of a gloomy day, but I needed this extra light and it's actually blinding me like crazy. Uh, but it's a very cool, left in I believe that's that's their style you can't deny that 
So I believe it's left in and it has the spaghetti string detail. I have not looked this one up, but it is smaller than most. I'm not sure if that's going to help or hurt, hurt it, but it's in pretty good shape, I think. So it's going to be at least a $15 figurine, if not $25. 15 to 25, that's my guess. So that's another thing that grabbed my attention in that flat. Another thing was this little ET figurine. It's ceramic. And I've done as much research as I could while I was there and even at home. And I have not found any other one like it at all, okay? So if you happen to know what this was for, how, how it was obtained, I don't think someone made it. It looks too good. It's ceramic, there's the bottom. No real markings on it, but it just looks too good for like someone to craft it themselves. So there it is, an ET figurine. I don't know if this was like a giveaway in a cereal box or something like that, but uh, obviously it's dated to the 80s. And I, again, I'm not sure about the value on something like this, but I would imagine somewhere between 15 to $20. But since there's no comparable solds at all to this, I have no clue. No markings at all. But that's another thing that kind of got my attention. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, so then I pretty much focused on that. After I bought it, I discovered a few more things. So we'll start with, I'm going to save the best for last, which are right here. And you might know what they are if you can probably see what those are, but they're pretty cool. Uh, next thing is this little figurine here. I thought it was all of, made of wood because the base is wood, but it is ceramic mounted to wood, and it's of this bird. This will probably go in the booth for a few dollars. So there it is, pretty cute. I also grabbed, or also in that same flat were these two animals. This is a cat and a dog, just like so. And they are marked Genuine Bone China Taiwan. So very cool, and they're in great shape. Um, I don't know what these would do online, but I'm more inclined to putting them in the booth. Uh, but I will do a little bit more research first, I think. I like the fact that they're matching and they're of, you know, I don't know. They're, they're, they're obviously the same maker. I just like them together. So as a pair, I would probably, oh, that's broke. No. I don't know what that is. See in the stomach there? It's not actually cracked. It's almost like it was made that way. It's like a stress line from it being made. Well, okay, yeah. Anyway, it says 1978 on it, so that's cool. I will sell this in the booth, I think, just because. Okay, this I am really torn about. It is a sea otter, and it's not a baby sea otter that's been taxidermied, but <laughs> that would be really bad. No, uh, it's like a figurine made of sea otter skin. And part of me thinks it's cool. Part of me doesn't really like this idea. I cannot find anything like this online. Okay, nothing. Nothing like it. It's kind of cute, I will say, as a figurine. But uh, I'm not really into skinning things and displaying them in your house. Not my cup of tea. Um, but you can see that it's sewn up on the bottom there. So. You know, the work has went into this. I have, I did not mention this. I have a worth point subscription now. I paid for it. Whether that makes me an idiot or not, I just wanted to try to get as much information as I can on things whenever I'm uh, looking things up. And, and there's always a roadblock whenever I find something and it shows that it sold a year ago or even five or six months ago. And that price can be found nowhere online except if you have a worth point subscription. So I finally bought one of those, and yes, it was expensive, but I'm hoping that over th throughout the year, the savings or, or the, the knowledge that I gain on how much things should actually be priced is going to outweigh what I end up paying per month. And it comes out to about $16 a month, and I paid for the whole year. So uh, anyways, ironically, I cannot find this anywhere. Sold, unsold, listed, it's just not out there. So if you happen to know what something like this could go for, I'd like to know. I don't know if it's even legal to sell it. I, I know that sounds strange, but there are certain things that are endangered. Uh, you know, you can't sell certain kind of parts of animals like tusks and things. So, uh, I don't know. What's your thoughts on that? Do you think it's sellable? Do you think it's going to go for a lot? Or should I just try to sell it here at the booth locally? Don't know. Okay, last thing I got is this 
souvenir. It's of an Ulu knife, U-L-U. -U. And it says Alaska. It's etched on there. I don't know if that's readable. Can you see it? It's right on the front there in, in capital letters, Alaska. And the knife itself is called an Ulu knife. And it is not, this is not really a, a real utilitarian knife. This is for a souvenir. It's made to look like a useful knife. And this here is part of an antler from a caribou, also known as a reindeer in Alaska. So yeah, it's a souvenir type thing. I have looked these up and real ones are ones that look like they're actually, oh, and who would, the people that would have used these are the Inuit people of Alaska. It's like an Eskimo type knife for everyday use. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's probably worth like 20 bucks. Uh, if this was like a real, real example of one, then they're probably upward of 100 or so. But being a souvenir and clearly marked as such, it's probably a $20 item. Okay, the thing that absolutely astonished me, and uh, frankly, I knew nothing about up until I got them and was able to research, are these little Japanese vases here. And this, this is a type of enamelware. Uh, it's brass, I believe in this case. And this one is of a flower, as you can see. Really pretty, it's like a blue background. And this one here is koi fish. There is wear to this. Now, if you can see that, the cracking along the bottom there, kind of like a crazing, the cracks there. So what this is, is cloisonne or cloisonne. It's a French word. And what it essentially means is there are tiny cloisons or cells, areas, defined by wire usually. And you would take wire and would uh, solder it to the metal. In this case, this one here is done using a more mass-produced method. I think uh, it's called G-I-N Ginbury, G-I-N-B, G-I-N-B-U-R-I, Ginbury. Okay, I'll put it right here below. <laughs> it's a method, it's a foil. Okay, so that's a foil that can be embossed it's an embossed foil and what it does is it creates these high points reliefs and then the low points is what are the areas that you paint on and then you fill it up with your enamel and your and all of that and then you sand it so it's surface level and everything's smooth and that's what it is anyways long story short uh, these go for all different types of prices and I'm unsure of what these are really valued at. These are marked on the bottom with an H and a flower on the bottoms and they're just really cool. I will sell them as a pair I believe in any circumstance but as far as the price is concerned I do not know. So some of these have sold for upwards of $300 while some $30 to $60 individually. As a pair of these, what I'm currently thinking is about $195 for the pair with shipping included on Etsy. And so that's, I think, with what I've learned, pretty reasonable for something like this. There is condition issues, of course, and I'm actually not even sure what these date to be, you know, when these were made. I would imagine around the turn of the century, the last century, and, uh, but they're really cool. And so that was definitely a surprise, and I will leave it at that, very neat. Oh, I'm out of stuff. So anyways, I have a part two coming up that'll be another display of items, not so much knickknacks. Uh, there'll be some other types of things that I only really get the opportunity to buy at these auctions or estate sales, things like that. So that'll be really fun and fresh. But thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.